So I think the key things to grow to 10 million at ARR, and we got that a number of years ago now, but I think the biggest challenges are focusing on metrics like churn. If your churn is extremely high, it doesn't mean it's impossible. You can grow to $10,000 a month with churn at essentially any level. There's lots of different ways you can get to that level. But to get to 10 million, so almost a million a month, you have to focus on churn. You have to focus on retention. And I think the best way to do that is early in the funnel. So focus on onboarding. Too many people completely ignore onboarding. They spend all their time doing marketing because they just listened to my point from the last section. They spend no time on onboarding. So you have all these customers potentially coming in and they're doing free trials. If you have a free trial and they're never signing up for a paid plan because they don't understand the product or maybe your free trial gives away too much or maybe it's just confusing. So don't focus enough on onboarding. If you can fix onboarding, generally that helps with churn. People stay around if they're fundamentally actually using your product. People are always going to churn if they don't know how to use your product or don't get set up properly. And then number two, and this is the same for any business really scaling beyond 10 million in revenue, you have to learn how to manage people and build a team. You can get to a million a year revenue with no team or a very small team. And I see it all the time. People who have a team of two plus themselves, you can get to a million. But I don't know if it's impossible, but it's close to impossible to get to 10 million without building a team and learning to to manage. That's definitely not saying I'm not an expert at managing. Yes, we have 150 people, but I'm not the world's best CEO or anything like that. You'll constantly be learning. But I think you need to be willing to hire people, willing to delegate tasks, whether they're full-time employees or whether they're freelancers or contractors, that's what you need to do. And they need to take over parts of the process. If you have a marketing channel, so we spoke about Instagram, threads, Twitter, TikTok, all of those different channels, maybe you can hire someone that helps with that. Yes, you might still need to be involved. For example, with your podcast, at the moment, you might be doing all the production yourself, but if you want to grow, you might hire someone full-time who's your podcast producer, and then you hire someone who's going to also do the marketing, and then you hire someone to make sure you're doing social media well, or it's being emailed out to your email list and your audience. So you hire people for all the different stages as you go. And I always think it's important, particularly on the way to 10 million, is figuring out what you're good at. And you probably still need to do that. I used to work within my own business today. I said, essentially have a job, but I work on the things I'm good at. And I definitely do not do the things I'm not good at. Get out of the way of people who are better at their job than you are. That's really the only way to grow to 10 million. And if you ask exactly the same question, how do you get to 50 million or how do you get to 100 million? It's exactly the same again. The only real difference is you need to learn to manage manager. On your way to 10 million, you just need to learn to manage people. Once you get beyond that level, I spend almost all of my time speaking to managers. I don't literally manage 150 people. I'm responsible for 150, but it's actually the, the managers within the team, the senior people that I spend all of my time working and speaking to.